Alrighty, yo, what is going on, everybody? It's your boy, Mr. DDG94 here. Back with another. Oh, shit. With another reaction video today. Man, we're going to do this for the one time, man. I'm trying to keep myself in the algorithm. <laughs> so, we're going to do this one for the one time. This is a throwback. So I I I I've talked about this before, but I don't think I can I I, I can fully explain. Uh, but back in the day, I want to say around 1998, 99, uh, McDonald's was doing this promotion with the Happy Meals. So apparently, they had started a series for Ronald McDonald. It was called Ronald McDonald Adventures. And it had like, I think they had like four or five cassette tapes that you could buy with your, with your, um, with your Happy Meal. I think your Happy Meal was going to come out to like $15, though. So ain't nobody trying to play $15 for no fucking Happy Meal. Because I think a Happy Meal, I think a Happy Meal back then was like three, three, two, three dollars. What is it? Ain't a Happy Meal like two or three dollars? Cheeseburger, small fry, apple juice, toy. <laughs> then you had to pay ten extra dollars for the goddamn VHS. But my mom, my mom, she got it for me though. She spent that money and got it for me. And this is the one that I got. I got the Grimace. I got the, I got the Grimace Island one, and then. McDonald's decided to bring out the Grimace, Grimace shake for Grimace's birthday or whatever, which we don't care about. I like nigga, who the fuck gave a fuck about Grimace, bro? Grimace was, I mean, next to Ronald McDonald, Grimace was probably the most scariest one out the whole group. But on here though, they did a good job of making him friendly and stuff like that. You know, the cartoon series. I do remember this though. I only had the Grimace Island. I didn't collect all five. My mom was not finna sit up here, pay ten dollars extra on a happy meal just to get a goddamn <laughs> just to get a goddamn VHS. No. Plus them motherfuckers ran out quick than a bitch. So it was like once they ran out, they started trying to come out with more, but the demand was so fucking high that shit, you just had to get them you had to get them off the street. <laughs> That was the best way to get him. You had to get him off the street. The bootleg man was going crazy. If you was trying to get the whole collection. But anyways, though, man. We're going to watch this. We're going to reminisce the good times. I know that Grim and Shake is out there. I'm, I'm not fucking with that Grim and Shake at all. Just let me get my two McDoubles and my two McChickens. And I'll be straight for the rest of the day. Anyways, so let's get right into this. Yeah, see, they had all these, and I only had the uh, okay, Grimace hold Island. Hold on one second. God damn, Do you remember bro? back in the late '90s when McDonald's started selling VHS this tapes? Loud as fuck. Yeah, that was a thing. The Wacky Adventures of Ronald McDonald oh, was had the an animated series that was released direct to video and could only be bought at McDonald's. The series would see Ronald McDonald and the gang through their adventures in McDonald land, and there were only six episodes made in. And fun fact, the people that made Rugrats is the ones that made this cartoon. So if you notice the animation style and you know the background, the the background music and the sound effects are similar to the Rugrats. That's because the people who made Rugrats made these cartoons. In total, the show was produced by Klasky Chupo, who you may know from iconic shows such as Rocket Power, The Wild Thornberries, Ah, Real Monsters, and of course, Rugrats. As a result, this show had an art style very similar to those shows, and I remember that sparking the biggest joy for me when I was a kid. Now, at face value, this, to me at least, looks like a cash grab. Going into this, it even was. as a kid, I didn't necessarily have the highest it was a, expectations. It was a cash grab. I mean, come on. This VHS was literally $3.50 and came with either a small vanilla ice cream cone. 
You bullshitting. I thought this shit was ten dollars. I think my mama was lying to me, cuz. I think my mama was lying to me, cuz. Cause she was acting like she was acting like this shit was expensive as fuck. My mom was acting like this shit was expensive as fuck. And then again, then again, my mom was cheap as fuck. My mom was very cheap. I love you, mom, but you were kind of cheap at times. At times, you were cheap. At times, you were cheap, mom. If you watch these videos, I don't know if you do, but if you do, at times, you was cheap. And you knew you was. You cut too many corners. So you, sometimes you cut corners to the point where, 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 where you screwed yourself over. And you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> I love you, mom. But anyways, though, I thought this shit was $10, though. Apparently, my mom was lying to me. This shit was three fifty. And the And the goddamn Happy Meal was back, back in the 90s and 2000s. Happy Meal was nothing but like three, four dollars, man. Come on, now. Or a Diet Coke. They were practically giving them away. However, these episodes would prove to be rather popular. Many McDonald's locations would frequently run out of VHS tapes, yep. which would leave fans going to every McDonald's in their area to try to find a copy of the latest episode. They I was remember high in one when I was a kid. I'm pretty sure I had the one that was called Scared Silly, but I'm not 100% sure. But see, see, I lived in the hood, and we had the bootleg man. And the bootleg man would come through. The bootleg man would, the bootleg man was so bold. He would stand in front of the McDonald's, talk about some, I got the VHSs, I got the VHSs, I got that, I got that McDonald's, I got that McDonald's for you, I'm selling it for the low low, I'm selling it for the low low. Nigga said, I'll sell it to you, he said, how much, how much is it in there? Shit, I'll sell it to you for this. I was like, mama, can I get it, can I get it, mama? She was like, nah. <laughs> but it's understandable because you don't know what the fuck this nigga was selling. This nigga could have sold you a blank tape. And you probably didn't even know it. But like I said, the bootleg man had it though. The bootleg man had it though. Shout out to the bootleg man for back in the days. On that. However, when I was looking at the list of episodes, I couldn't help but be drawn to one in particular. Especially given the fact that McDonald's and practically half of the entire internet are celebrating the 52nd birthday of one certain lovable large purple creature. Yeah, don't nobody give a fuck origin. about Grimace. Course, we're talking about none other than our pal Grimace. Nigga, fuck Grimace. Grimace is a character who was introduced back in the 70s and originally he was known as Evil Grimace. His character was originally known for stealing milkshakes from everyone, much like the Hamburglar attempted to do with burgers. However, Evil Grimace apparently terrified children, and as a result, they quickly morphed him into a character who shares in the joy of milkshakes with his friends. A change which honestly was probably for the best. Nowadays, Grimace is known as being a valued member of the McDonald Land crew and for being in touch with his emotions. He has also been known over these last few weeks for the Grimace's birthday meal being served at McDonald's restaurants for a limited time, complete with either a Big Mac or chicken nuggets, fries. Damn, bruh, is this a promotion or something? The fuck get this shit out of here? I think people some really disturbing problems all over TikTok. I don't know about yours, but right now my TikTok feed is flooded with people trying the Grimace shake and ending up either dead or vomiting purple sludge. Needless to say though, Grimace has been on a lot of people's minds recently, myself included. So naturally, when I found myself scrolling through the short list of episodes of the Wacky Adventures of Ronald McDonald, my attention was immediately drawn to the legend of Grimace Island. Come on, how could I pass it? This was the only one I had, bruh. And I played the fuck out that tape. That tape popped, bro. I played this motherfucking tape so much it popped. I don't, it ain't even around no more. I had to throw that bitch in the garbage, bro. That shit popped. That's how much I played this shit. It popped midway through. We, I'm talking about, I'm midway through the movie, and all of a sudden I hear a boom, smoke coming out the VCR. I'm like, I'm, I'm not telling my mama shit. I'm just push, I'm pushing the shit out the eject button. I'm like eject, nigga, eject, eject, nigga. Luckily it came out, and the tape and shit. I just I yanked that motherfucker out, got all the tape out and everything. I looked at, I looked around. 
I threw that bitch in the garbage. I ain't even say nothing. I ain't, I ain't even say that. I ain't want to get my ass whooped. I ain't want to get my ass whooped, bruh, for real, bruh. I ain't want to get my ass whooped for that tape popping. Because sometimes when tapes break, I normally get my ass whooped for it. Because I did something stupid. I remember one time on my Thomas the Tank Engine, one of my Thomas the Tank Engine tapes, I fucked around and uh, poured juice on it. I fucked around pouring juice on one of my Thomas the Tank Engine tapes. And fucked that one up. And, and that was my favorite Thomas the Tank Engine too. That was bad. And that was my favorite one. The only reason why that was my favorite one was because it came with the motherfucking toy. You know, like back in the day when, when Thomas the Tank Engine was on VHS and they had the toy at the top. Nigga, I had hella nigga. I ain't gonna lie to you. I stole like I stole a couple of them. I stole a Percy. I stole a Gordon, I stole a James. I was trying to get an Edward too, but they was looking at me, so I stopped. But yeah, I I I, I ripped. I, I would always cause they would put them at the top. Why would you put real talk though? Real talk though. Thomas the tank engine though. Know? Why would you put the toy at the top of the VHS and it's detachable? Like I can't go in, like I can't just like I can't rip the plastic off. Open up the box, take the toy out, put the thing back on the shelf, put the toy in my pocket, and walk out. Come on, man. This shit was too easy. That was too easy of a lick, bro. Fuck out of here. With the opportunity to get some sweet, sweet lore, finally a chance to dive into the grimace arc of the manga, and it's actually somewhat relevant right now? Hell yeah, man. That's why today, on our nostalgic walk down memory lane, we're gonna go right back to 1999 and check out the legend of Grimace Island. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It started off live action, then it go into cartoon. I remember this. Wake up, wake up, it's another day. Time to get going, why sleep when we can play? Morning, Sunday. Good morning, Ronald. Okay. Okay, hold on. I'm just going to put a stop to this right now and save you all the headache that is the intro sequence to this show. Now, I'll give it this much. Ronald's house looks just about as bizarre as I'd expect, especially being the main character in this world crafted around his existence. Inside of his classic McDonald's logo shaped house, we see Ronald sleeping in his bed that is literally a burger next to his crazy shaped shelves, fireman pole, and just so many more bizarre things. My favorite thing here though has to be the Rube Goldberg machine that Ronald uses when he first wakes up. He pulls this weird green tube thing and it causes this really long and inconvenient chain reaction that at the end of it just opens up his curtains automatically for him. Don't get me wrong, I love a good breakfast machine, but like, just imagine the inconvenience that this is. I just imagine every night before bed, a very exhausted and tired Ronald has to spend like an hour setting up this machine so that it can open up his curtains in the morning for him. We also see Ronald's dog Sunday, who, fun fact in this live action sequence is just Vern Troyer in a costume, pulling Ronald's blankets <laughs> off one mini by me. one, with each blanket comically being a different ingredient on the burger that he's sleeping in. I couldn't help but notice that all the blankets were super thick too, and I feel like that's just a testament of how committed Ronald McDonald is to his bit. Like, this guy's probably sweating buckets and overheating all night as he's trying to sleep, but he powers through it because he's so seriously devoted to his existence as the mascot for McDonald's. It's gone so far to the point that his entire house just really looks inconvenient to live in. Not to mention all the overwhelming decorations and clashing colors. The worst part of this intro by far, though, is the song. This is literally one of the worst songs that I have ever heard in my entire life. Getting even cooler, step into a new beat. Got a tingling inside me and it's spreading to my feet. McDonald land is changing. Everything is rearranging. I can't sit still because it's a beautiful day. And Ronald McDonald's got to say. Yeah, that's enough of that. As the actual episode starts, we see McDonald land on a very snowy winter day as Ronald is in his house building a McDonald's branded ship in a bottle and Sunday is roasting him for his weird hobbies. Just then, a red light flashes as a super loud alarm goes off, startling Ronald. Sunday tells him that he'll get it and we see him go down the fireman pole and walk up to the console. He answers a video call from Grimace who asks to speak to Ronald. 
I gotta point out, I'm honestly not surprised that even Ronald McDonald's phone isn't normal. Like, this crazy alarm goes off with flashing lights and everything, and it's literally just a phone call. Seems overkill to me, but super fitting for Ronald's obnoxious character. Sunday shouts for Ronald to come talk to Grimace, and we see Ronald fighting with the ship in a bottle that at this point is stuck on his finger, as he goes down the fireman pole to talk to Grimace. As he sits down, Grimace tells him that he got a letter in the mail. Ronald asks him what the letter says, and Grimace says that he doesn't know yet because he hasn't opened it, he's just been looking at it. This is the exact moment when I was struck with the realization of just how obnoxious Grimace is. This dude checked his mail, got a letter, and just sat there staring at it. Then he decides that this is so exciting that he's got to call Ronald McDonald and tell him all about it without even knowing what the letter says. I don't want to knock Grimace too hard, I mean it's his birthday, come on, but jeez does he have me face palming so hard right now. Grimace opens the letter and he reads it to Ronald and Sunday. Dear Grimace, we need your help. You're our only uh -huh. hope. Save us, please. There's a treasure if you do. Signed, all the Grimaces of Grimace Island. Grimace Island? Yeah, it's the original home of all the world's Grimaces. Uh -huh. uh, a great big island that's been lost for hundreds of years. Lost Grimaces, why am I not surprised? And now they need my help. Grimace says that this sounds way too scary, but Ronald says that all of the gang will go with Grimace so that he doesn't have to face this journey alone. Ronald tells Grimace to meet him at the McDonald Land dock in five minutes. Meanwhile, Ronald makes a phone call to Birdie and the Hamburglar and asks them if they can help. He tells them to grab their new friend Franklin and to meet them at the docks. Grimace Island, here we come! Do you think we can ever just have a normal adventure? <laughs> Oh, little dog has a question. <laughs> there is two things that I really want to point out here about that sequence we just saw. First of all, the music that they use in this scene gives me heavy Rugrats vibes, but that's not surprising considering that this was made by the same company that made Rugrats, but on top of that, a lot of the music that was used in the show was actually recycled for use in the later seasons of Rugrats, so there's a good chance that we're going to end up hearing some familiar background music at a few points here. The other thing I wanted to point out is that I don't know about you, but this was the point in the show where I was able to take a sigh of relief and actually start enjoying it. The live action sequence in Ronald's house is just way too overwhelming for me. There's just so much going on, so many clashing colors, and it just kind of felt cluttered with all of Ronald's crazy decorations and junk. That combined with the absolute potato quality of live action shows back then, it was just kind of overstimulating. However, I wouldn't expect much less from a fast food clown. We see Ronald and Sunday make a crash landing at the docks of McDonald Land. You're batting a thousand on these landings, Ronald. Sorry about that, pal. I'll get it right next time. But now, one ship. Just add water. Well, First Officer Sunday, have you ever in your day seen a finer ship in all the sea? Stunning. Did I mention that I get seasick? We then see the Hamburglar, Grimace, and Birdie loading up their supplies onto the ship with their new friend Franklin, who is seemingly just a normal kid. The group then starts speculating about the treasure that they're going to get on Grimace Island. I bet it's a great big treasure. <laughs> oh boy, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy, just wait till the captain hears this. Our treasure. <laughs> treasure? Treasure? Who said treasure? You did. Over there. The three little chicken nuggets overheard the pirate talking about treasure, and they start to beg him to let them be pirates too. He tells them that they need to talk to One-Eyed Sally first, and we immediately cut over to the McDonald's gang as they're leaving for Grimace Island. The group starts asking Grimace about the island and if he's been there before. Grimace explains that not only has he never been there, but he also has no idea where it is, and apparently nobody else in the entire world knows where it is. He elaborates and tells them the legend of Grimace Island. He explains that Grimace Island was known as a happy place where no one fought or yelled. Then one day, many many years ago, humans came to the island and they weren't very nice. 
They had heard about the treasure of Grimace Island and they showed up to take it. Unfortunately, the Grimaces aren't a very brave species by nature, so they hid from the humans. So the mean people took the treasure away from the Grimaces uh, and never came back or said thank you. <gasps> That's horrible, Grimace! I know! You should always say thank you. Then what happened? Well, you see, the mean people didn't get all the Grimace treasure. The, uh, and the Grimaces were afraid they'd come back. So they did a big Grimace dance and made the whole island shake so hard, it broke from the ocean floor uh, and drifted far, far away. The Grimaces figured that if no one can find them, then no one can hurt them or steal their last treasure. As the group continues to sail, we see a submarine scope pop out of the water. We cut on down to a sub to see none other than One-Eyed Sally and the pirate from earlier talking about how there's probably loads of treasure on that island and how they're going to take it all. Meanwhile, the three little McNugget pirates are playing in the submarine, singing about how happy they are to be pirates. Arr, lucky thing they got that letter from Grimace Island, hey Captain? Bladder you ding dong! I wrote that letter! I knew that Grimace and his friends would sail to save the Grimaces and lead us right to the legendary Grimace Island! <laughs> Back on the ship, we see the group brainstorming how they could possibly find Grimace Island. Grimace starts to feel discouraged and suggests that maybe they should turn around and go home, but just then, this happens. What's that in your pocket, Grimace? Oh, nothing. Oh, that's just a magic map my great-great-grandmother Winky Grimace gave me. A magic map? Why didn't you say something? Let's see. Hmm. This way to Grimace Island and the treasure. Let's set our course. I just have to stop for a sec and say that I didn't think that Grimace had pockets, and I'm kind of terrified to think of where the Hamburglar pulled that map from. Birdie takes the map up to the crow's nest, and she starts directing Captain Ronald to where the map is leading them using her natural bird instinct. The crew sails as we cut right into another song. Sail the sea. I don't know, but it worries me. We've never tried this thing before. That's just what adventure's for. Setting south to sail the sea. How exciting it will be. Wind and sky and majesty. Setting south to sail the sea. The busty mateys, mend your clothes. Now, I will say this much, it's not great, but at least the song isn't anywhere near as bad as that intro song was. Like, this one isn't great by any means, but at least it doesn't make me want to Van Gogh myself. As the group continues sailing, we see them encounter issue after issue. They end up being picked up by an angry whale who shoots water out of his blowhole and sends their ship flying off into the distance. After that happens, a massive thunderstorm breaks out out of nowhere. Ronald gets the idea to go up to the crow's nest and to give a huge blow, and that should send the whole storm elsewhere, but as soon as he gets up to the top, he gets struck by lightning and thrown overboard. Everyone starts to panic as the ship is taking on heavy waves without a captain. They look around, but Ronald is nowhere to be found. Then, out of nowhere, he's seen flying on some sort of hang glider contraption that looks kinda like Aang's air glider from Avatar The Last Airbender. He starts getting close to the ocean, so Grimace throws him a life preserver, but unfortunately, Grimace falls overboard in the process. Hello, Grimace! Mind if I catch a ride? No problem, Level! Hop right on! Thanks, Grimace! <laughs> You're standing on my ticklish spot! <gasps> Do you surf, Grimace? Uh, I don't think so, but I can learn. Before we continue, just really quick, I have to take a sec to point out how obnoxiously thick that they animated Ronald in this show. Like, regular live action my, my Ronald man, isn't we, necessary. We here for However, that. in for this God cartoon, it. on the other hand, he got them cheeks and thick. My, my man, fuck out of here with that gay shit, bro. Montage of everyone singing about how Ronald is a surfing king. The coolest cat, <laughs> Oceanside. Go, go, Rhino, take a ride. I'm a surfing king, I can do about anything. Shoot that girl. Oh, this is cool. Hang, tang, get loose, ride that way. Go, go, Rhino, you're the most. Not gonna lie, that song is also pretty terrible, as has pretty much every other song in this episode has been so far. But, like, the sequence overall was just kind of odd. 
Like, one second it's stormy, and next thing you know it's a beautiful day, and everyone's rocking out and water skiing. Then, all of a sudden, next thing you know, the song comes to an end, and we cut right back to one-eyed Sally and her right-hand man, Blather, as he's looking through the telescope. <laughs> it's all wind and rain and waves, and some guy surfing on a grimace. Surfing a grimace? <laughs> We hit something. Hello down there! Anybody home? You let him find us! He's in oh, 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 I, I shake him loose! Man your stations! I just gotta point out at this point, Blather says that there's some guy riding on a grimace. But like, shouldn't they know who Ronald McDonald is? They literally live in McDonald land. I would assume that everyone there knows who Ronald is. I mean, come on, it's named after Ronald himself. But regardless, the submarine then crashes into Ronald's ship, surprisingly not causing any damage as Ronald and Grimace are launched right back onto the ship. Meanwhile, the submarine dives back down as One-Eyed Sally is angry about the fact that they know that they're being followed now. Blather tries to explain that maybe they thought it was just an accident, which is legitimately what happened, but she puts him down instead, telling him to stop thinking because he's not good at it. Meanwhile, back over on the ship, Ronald points out that they're almost there, but then he looks up and all of a sudden realizes that they're surrounded by giant, jagged rocks on both sides of the ship that's on a narrow path. At this point, things start to get pretty intense, so I'm gonna go ahead and pass the torch on over to my good friend the Night Butterfly so that he can tell you guys all about it. Take it away, my brother. Hey everybody, my name is the Night Butterfly. I'd like to say a huge thank you to Sean for allowing me to be part of this video. It generally means the world to me, so let's dive into the chaos. As the ship continues through the narrow path of jagged rocks, we see what looks like the Kraken swimming in pursuit of their ship. One second, Sunday. This is the tricky part. Oh, okay, okay. What is it? Octopus! Oh, no, that's no octopus. It's a crack in the biggest sea monster in the world. If I can't see it, it can't see me. If I can't see it, it can't see me. Betty and Sunday try and fight the Kraken off. Meanwhile, Ronald is up on the sail, trying to think of a plan. He ends up grabbing the nearby rope, and he throws it at the Kraken, and somehow it magically wraps itself around the Kraken's beak. As the Kraken struggles to get it off, the Kraken drops the Hamburglar in mid-air, leaving him falling right for the ocean. But right at the perfect time, Ronald swings by on a rope and catches him, returning him safely to the ship. After that, we cut right back to One-Eyed Sally and Blather in their submarine. They're still in pursuit of Ronald and the gang, and they catch sight of the Kraken, so they decide to dive a little lower to avoid the beast. The Kraken dives just as low as they do, and One-Eyed Sally decides they're going to have to fight him instead. She then tells Blaver to fire the torpedoes from the submarine. Arr, sorry, Captain. We can't do that. Can't? Can't? Why can't we? Well, you see... Uh, yeah. I forgot to pack the torpedoes! You forgot to pack the torpedoes. Imagine that. Fire torpedo 2-1! Yeah! After the Kraken then spits Blaver out, we see him on top of the submarine, and he's begging Sally to let him back into the submarine. Thankfully, that's the last we see of the Kraken, as after that we cut right back to Ronald and the gang on their ship, and now that we're past all that chaos, I'm going to pass the torch back over to Sean. Thank you once again, Sean, for letting me be in the video, and take it away, dude. I gotta give a huge thanks and shout out to my friend the Night Butterfly. Subscribe if you like. 10 out of 10 recommend, and he's a great guy. Way faster now. Franklin thinks maybe they're in a current, but the group looks down to see a massive whirlpool in the ocean. Ronald has all of them throw on some scuba gear as they jump off the ship and down into the whirlpool. Where are we? My guess is that we're under Grimace Island. How do you know? Look! Does anyone else hear those drums? Uh, I thought it was my knees. Ronald tries to introduce himself to the hiding Grimaces, but they're all scared of him. The Hamburglar pushes Grimace towards them, saying that it's his island and that he should do something. 
We then hard cut literally out of nowhere to this montage. Okay, first of all, how did they just immediately teleport from that weird underground cave to the top world? Second of all, is it just me, or does this whole episode feel like some kind of weird freaky fever dream or something? Honestly, this whole episode is kind of a trip, and it took this obnoxious montage with the grimaces for me to realize it. The montage ends and, oh wait, never mind, I guess they were never really up top dancing and singing? they're still underground in the cave as the literal same exact conga line of dancing grimaces we saw in that montage are now down in the cave telling Grimace and everyone to follow them. As everyone walks off, we see one-eyed Sally and Blather appear in the pool of water not far behind them. Meanwhile, Ronald and the group are talking to the leader of the grimaces who is very upset with them. You have broken ancient Grimace Tapo. No one is allowed to visit the uh, Grimace Island. Ah, you have come, and now others may follow. Now our treasure can never be ah, ah, safe. Well, we won't do you any harm, your high grimaceness. Besides, Grimace's letter told him to come. Ah, letter. Grimace shows the leader the letter that he received in the mail, and the leader says that neither him nor any Grimace on the island wrote it, which honestly isn't surprising considering that they probably don't have postage on this remote island that nobody in the world knows where it is. Just then, this happens. But why would someone send Grimace a fake letter? Ah! I'll give you three guesses. One I'm sorry. Treasure, treasure, treasure. Arr, treasure. I wrote that letter knowing that silly Grimace would lead me right to you silly Grimaces and your legendary treasure. Now hand it over or else. Okay, okay, hold on a sec. When the villains made their grand reveal, literally the whole group of friends gasps and collectively exclaims, One-Eyed Sally, which tells us that they all know who One-Eyed Sally is. But on that note, I gotta circle back to my earlier point of them seeing Ronald surfing on Grimace and saying that it's just some guy surfing on top of him. Like, the odds of the whole group of friends knowing who Sally is, but her not even knowing who Ronald is, is the one who it, sent him the letter. But she didn't know Sally gives the king till the count of three to tell them where the treasure is, and of course, he naturally folds before she even gets to one. Just follow the trail and you'll find the cave where the treasure is, uh, kept. Nah, please, we don't want any problems. Just leave us in peace. I'll leave you in peace. A piece of my cannons. Open fire! I said, open fire! Are you having fun anymore? Nah, are you? So I stopped having fun a while ago. Let's quit. Now, really quick, I gotta take a sec and say, God, I love the Nuggets. They're just so clueless and happy-go-lucky. They just want to have fun and have a good time. Then, once the fun's over, they're just like, nah, let's quit, bye. And then they run right over to Ronald and join his team. One-Eyed Sally commands Blather to open fire, which he does. But instead of cannonballs, his cannon fires hundreds upon hundreds of fish. I really can't help but wonder where all these fish came from, because there's no way all those fish fit inside of that small of a cannon, especially considering that they shot the cannon twice. That means that they would have had to have extra fish to reload hundreds of more fish into the cannon, and I don't know about you, but I didn't see them carrying any backup fish. With Ronald and the gang effectively covered in fish and the grimaces cowering in fear, One-Eyed Sally and Blather run for the trail to get the treasure. This is all my fault. Nah, I should have known that letter was a fake. Come on, Grimace. You were tricked. It could have happened to anyone. Yeah, but now the last of the Grimace treasure will be taken, all because of me. Then Grimace needs me. the other Grimaces to stand up to those pirates and stop them from taking that treasure. Uh, oh, but I'm afraid to fight, Ronald. But what if you don't have to fight? You could tickle instead. <laughs> Grimace says that he's a coward and that he's afraid to even get close to them. Ronald says that he's been through so much today and that he's the bravest coward that they know. With a little pep talk from Ronald under his belt and a nice feather from the king, 
Grimace and the gang head towards the trail in pursuit of One-Eyed Sally. We cut over to Sally and Blather in the cave as they finally find the treasure chest. They struggle to open the chest and they end up being confronted by Grimace. Take care of him, Blather! Arr. Come any closer and I tickle! That treasure belongs to Grimace Island! Correction, my large purple friend! It belongs to me! Now drop the feather and put your hands in the air! For the record, I'm not having fun anymore. Sally has all of them tied and hanging upside down as she tortures them by tickling. Grimace bravely challenges her and says that if she's going to pick on anyone, she should pick on him. She then starts tickling him and we quickly hear some Grimace tribal chanting approach. All of the Grimaces show up with feathers in hand, ready to tickle attack One-Eyed Sally and Blather. Having been surrounded by the Grimaces, the evil pirates decide to run back into the cave and hide. The Grimaces cut Ronald and the gang down. Ronald walks up to King Grimace to thank him, but he says that it's them that they should be thanking. He says that Grimace showed them that even if it might be a little scary, sometimes they need to rise to a special challenge. Duh, well, I still have a job to finish. Duh, do you think I could borrow another feather? Uh, one night Sally maybe give her the other one. Duh, it's my great honor, Grimace. Who would have thought? I always knew he had it in him. That, and about 900 pounds of something else. We see One-Eyed Sally and Blather pulling the treasure chest out of the cave. Grimace and the rest of the group are standing outside waiting for them. Blather immediately starts begging for Grimace not to tickle him and apologizing. You are very rude, uh, pirates! Uh, uh, please, uh, take Blather! Uh, let me go! I'll give you anything! Anything you want! Uh, here, here's my eye patch! How would you like his wooden leg? Uh, I don't want your leg! I want you to be nice, or go back to where you came from, and leave the Grimace treasure alone! Or else I'll use this! I'll give you to the count of three! Having been defeated, One-Eyed Sally and Blather head for the hills with their tails between their legs. Meanwhile, King Grimace thanks Grimace for his valiant effort and rewards his bravery with the treasure of Grimace Island, which we learn is a golden chalice called the Golden Cup of Grimace Bravery. The king exclaims that there has never been a brave enough Grimace to earn it until today. Everyone congratulates Grimace and the friends talk about how exhausted they are as they all decide that it's time for them to go home. The king tells them that they are always welcome back on Grimace Island and that he hopes that they return soon. Um, just how are we going to get home? Friends in high places. Why didn't we think of this in the first place? First. Would have been a lot faster. Come on, guys. Where's your spirit of adventure? Hey, look! What do you mean you lost the oars? Blather tells Sally that the sharks ate the oars, and Sally commands him to start paddling with his hands instead. I got a question really quick. Where do they get this boat? And what happened to their submarine? On that note, what happened to Ronald's ship? You're telling me that both groups left behind their probably thousands of dollars in nautical vessels just to go through this whirlpool and never go back for them? I mean, I'll accept the cartoon logic, but like, that doesn't make much sense at all logistically. The animated portion of this episode comes to an end with all of the friends happily flying off into the distance, and just like that, we're teleported right back to hell. Whoa! Oh, I know. All we need is a really big pillow for this side. That's a start. We fast forward an unknown amount of time while we see Ronald preparing an old style movie projector as he says that they're going to watch some Grimace home movies. Oh boy, there's my grandma Winky. Uh, oh, she's the one who gave me the map. Oh, uh, and there's my dad with uh, uh, my mom. Oh, aren't they a handsome couple? You know, Grimace, I have to say, you have your mother's eyes. And you have your father's prominent chin. Oh, uh, really? And your grandma Winky's fat ankles. Uh, I know. I've got it proud of him. Oh, that's my great grandma Jenny Grimace. The episode ends with Grimace happily exclaiming that he isn't a coward anymore and that he has a cup to prove it. Now, right out the gate, I want to say that this show is just weird as hell. 
I don't want to say it was bad as a whole. I mean, the musical numbers were trash and there were some awkward bits, but the concept and story weren't all bad by any means. I really have to take a second to question how Grimace came to be though. As far as we know, Grimace and his family are the only ones of his kind outside of Grimace Island, but I can't help but wonder how they made it off of Grimace Island. I wouldn't have minded a bit of backstory as to Grimace's origins and when his family moved away from the island. I feel like that home movie segment at the end would have been a pretty decent spot to shoehorn in some kind of explanation and background on that, but eh, I'm not surprised that they didn't. I mean, we're talking about a $3.50 cassette tape gimmick. It's not like they were trying to flush out some deep lore in these niche VHS cassettes that quite a few people never even really got their hands on. These episodes wouldn't even end up airing on any TV networks either. They were never put into syndication, they just simply existed on their tapes until they were uploaded to the internet a little more than a decade ago. I gotta point out that the background music was what really did it for me. I recognize so many songs and noises that I know I've heard in the later seasons of Rugrats and it really hit me with a nice wave of nostalgia. On top of that, the animation and art style is just amazing in my opinion. There's just something about that classic Klasky Chupo animation that just puts a huge smile on my face. I just love it. You know, I can definitely say that, all things considered, this episode was a pretty good one. Sure, the live action sequences were kind of like nails on a chalkboard, not gonna lie, but on the whole, much like this grimace shake on a hot summer's day here in my garage, it was pretty good. Yep, pretty good. Alrighty, so that's just gonna about do it for this one. I know this shit was kind of cringe. It's very cringe, but it's just as cringe as you niggas out here at this goddamn this goddamn shake right here. Y'all in this goddamn grimace shake and shit. Y'all just as cringe as well. Anyways, let's just go about do it for this one. I'll see y'all next video today. Peace out.